Hello, my name is Chris Belland. I am the Program and Outreach Manager for Veterans Relations here at Historic Fort Snelling. And what I have in front of me is examples of how soldiers carried ammunition uh, from about the early 1800s and uh, will work all the way up through the, uh, to the 1940s. Uh, the earliest example I have right here is simply a uh, pattern of 1808 cartridge box. There's 24 uh, spaces in a drilled block to carry uh, ammunition for uh, flintlock muskets. Uh, no other item was needed to carry ammunition. Uh, with these weapons, as the powder used in the cartridge itself uh, was enough to prime and load the musket. Moving forward uh, to the 1850s and the 1860s during the American Civil War, uh, the cartridge box is still the main method of carrying ammunition, uh, but rather now utilizing tins to carry 20, ones, 20 rounds on top and 20 rounds down below in the lower section of those tins. But now since using the percussion firearms, we have what is called a cap box. Uh, carries loose uh, percussion caps, as that is the main method of priming uh, muskets of that time period. Uh, but dur during the Civil War and afterward, uh, breech loaders start to become the more predominant style of firearm. And in 1866, the Army adopts a version, uh, it's a converted musket. Uh, this is a later style of ammunition, but it essentially becomes self-contained ammunition. And that's where soldiers started to make their own cartridge belts uh, out of scrap leather or utilizing civilian styles. Uh, but in 1876, the Army finally uh, gives up its hope to have forcing soldiers to use cartridge boxes to carry this new style of ammunition and starts to produce uh, thimble belts, as sometimes they're referred to as. Later on, when the Army adopts a smokeless powder rifle, right here we have uh, at the time called 30 Army, but this is 3040 Crag ammunition. Uh, in 1892, the Army adopted the first uh, essentially modern uh, style rifle using smokeless ammunition. This belt here will hold 100 rounds of that ammunition in double loops. Moving forward here, we have the next style of cartridge box, or cartridge belt, excuse me, but now we have a, a entirely fabric belt that contains pouches that will hold two five round stripper clips for a 1903 Springfield rifle. And that would re remain in use, that style of belt. We can see here the latest one, a 1923 uh, version of cartridge belt. And this will now hold two five round stripper clips or a single end block of eight rounds for the M1 rifle. And that's all what we have here today. Uh, it's a little bit of uh, military material culture we ha have here at Historic Fort Snelling. If you'd like to see more, uh, please come out to the site and uh, see what we have.